Hey friends, I'm Liz Holtzman and you're listening to The Simplified Podcast. If you're looking for a quiet place where you can filter out the noise and the hustle, this is it. Every week we invite you to slow down and join us to explore practical ways to organize and automate the complicated parts of life so you can focus on what truly matters most. This is my husband's first official Father's Day, and I am just so excited to celebrate this year. That said, I usually struggle with gifts for the guys in my life. (laughs) Why are they so darn hard to shop for? If you're in the same boat, I took one for the team and rounded up some ideas for Father's Day gifts on my Substack, and Emily has a really great gift guide this year too. We will link them both in the show notes for you, but one thing we both included on our lists is the Simplified Dapper Desk Planner. Okay, my husband David loves his Dapper Desk Planner. This year's fawn color is so perfectly classic and masculine and warm, and it makes a really meaningful gift. Plus, pro simplified tip, write a few notes in his new planner before you give it to him. He will love coming across the little surprises all year long. Have you tried to buy or sell a home lately? Let me tell you, it is a wild world out there, people. We are home shopping as we speak, and it is hard. With interest rates sky high, it is a really competitive, fast-moving environment in the real estate department right now. But now that we have our son Bennett, we have a lot to consider, more than we've ever had to before. We need more space than we did when it was just the two of us. We also want him to be in a neighborhood with kids his age where he can run and play and ride his bike down the street, see all his friends from school. Bonus points if he can walk to school. School districts are also really important to us in our next house, which of course comes with the price tag. And the price tag on our next house has us really thinking about how we can get the best value for our current home. How do we make our house stand out in this competitive market and get the best offer we can? If you're putting your home on the market soon, I bet you've probably thought this to yourself. What can I do to boost my home's value that is quick, inexpensive, and I can do it myself? I'm happy to tell you that these kinds of DIY projects do exist, and we're going to talk about them today with an expert. We are talking with Amanda Pendleton from Zillow. Yes, that Zillow, the one you check 18 times a day to see if any new houses have come on the market. Just me? Okay, great. Amanda is Zillow's home trends expert, and she's passionate about renovating and restoring historic homes. But lucky for us, she's going to tell us about how to spruce up all kinds of homes today. And hey, even if you're not house shopping right now, this episode is still going to be super helpful for you. If you're just trying to figure out how to give yourself some upgrades so you can enjoy your home more now, this episode is for you. If you want to enjoy these upgrades now while also thinking, hey, this might be helpful down the road when we do try to sell the house, this episode is for you too. I'm so glad to share this conversation with you. Amanda had some fascinating insights into what's going on in the housing market right now and how to use your time and money to actually make a difference to buyers out there. I think you'll really enjoy this one. Here's my conversation with Zillow's home trends expert, Amanda Pendleton. Hi, Amanda. We are so excited to have you on the podcast today. Selfishly, I'm very excited to pick your brain. My husband and I are in the hard, messy middle of home searching. (laughs) So our chat couldn't come at a better time. I am really excited to hear what is going on in your world. I'm so excited to be here, Liz. I'm sorry you're stuck in the messy middle. I hope (laughs) I can help make this process a little bit easier for you. So excited to be here and share share some, some knowledge. Needless to say, it has been an interesting few years for the housing market, understatement of the decade. <laughs> <laughs> so what does it look like right now? What are you seeing? What does it look like from your perspective? So we're seeing that the housing market really has come back to life this spring after a frozen fall and winter. We know that the people who can afford to buy in today's market are back in force. They've kind of accepted today's higher mortgage rates, but sellers are still waiting on the sidelines. So that means there's just 
not very many homes available for sale right now. So buyers are back to competing for those few listings that are available. And that's pushing up prices. And yeah, in some cities, even those pandemic era bidding wars are back for the most affordable starter home. So really buyers who can afford today's higher rates have fewer options. They can expect more competition for well-priced homes, but but it's really nothing like the crazy kind of competition we saw during the pandemic. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. We fell in love with the house and there were eight other offers on the plate during one weekend. So we lost out by quite a bit. And it's just crazy to see how high offers are going over asking. I think you're right. The cyclical people aren't moving. And it's just kind of the cycle that, you know, if people aren't moving there, there are no more houses. So it's we are feeling that in the Midwest for Mm -hmm. sure, (laughs) which leads to my next question. Is anyone buying other than me? And if so, (laughs) who are these people? And where are they? Are there parts of the country that are seeing this more than others? Or where are people buying? Well, clearly, as you've experienced, right, there aren't a lot of people out there still in the market despite these major affordability challenges. And actually, we're seeing a lot of first-time millennial home buyers in the market today. They're now making up nearly half of all successful buyers. They were making up about a third of all successful buyers during the pandemic. And the reason is because those repeat buyers just aren't moving unless they absolutely have to. They've locked in those low rates. So it's almost impossible for them to move up without paying a lot more with today's rates. First time buyers, meanwhile, they're kind of looking at a mortgage payment and they're saying, yeah, this is high, but my rent has skyrocketed as well, right? Yeah. So so the the equation for them is a little bit different. As for where people are shopping, yeah, you nailed it. Midwest (laughs) is huge. (laughs) Sunbelt, really popular right now. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and, even in a slower housing market nationally, these regions are just proving to be really resilient. We're seeing homes holding their value. They're selling faster. And these housing markets are generally more stable than the rest of the country. And the reason it comes all the way back to affordability again. You know, potential home buyers are looking for places where they can put down roots, where they can Mm -hmm. afford to buy a home, where they can have a high quality of life. And the Midwest still offers home prices below the national median. Now, the Sun Belt, like metros like Charlotte, Dallas, Nashville, they're definitely getting more expensive, but they're still cheaper than a San Francisco or a Seattle or a Boston. So, you know, that's appealing, that relative affordability. And of course, the promise of of year-round outdoor living is pretty nice, too. So if we are looking to boost our home value, what is the number one top thing that we need to consider renovating? What should we pay attention to first? Okay, so I always say if you're renovating your home because you want to make it better for you or for your family, go for it. Absolutely. If you're renovating with only resale in mind, you really have to think about ROI, the projects that are going to maximize that return on investment. Renovation projects just as a whole rarely deliver that dollar for dollar return on investment. So your first step is to really prioritize the projects that are going to make your home clean, safe and functional. So think about like replacing your old carpeting, fix your broken fence, you know, even think about a mid-range bathroom remodel. If you stick to modest finishes, like you're skipping the gold-plated toilet, <laughs> you could see a dollar and seven cents come back to you on every single dollar you put in wow. to a mid-range bathroom remodel. Then the next thing I would think about improving is your outdoor space. We know outdoor space has just become so important for yeah. today's post-pandemic buyers. So think about adding functionality to your yard. Start by landscaping, clean it all up, and then think about adding things like outdoor path lighting or deck lighting or at a fire pit. So we know from our Zillow data that both of these like relatively affordable features can boost your home sale price by 1% if you mention them in a listing description. That's crazy. I think it's so interesting. You make such a good point of being stuck in our homes for so long during the pandemic. I think we all sort of started to look around within our four walls and what here is driving me nuts. And I think that there are so many things and little projects like that that 
either we have thought about tackling or can see why we need to tackle. So I think that's such a great point. Is there anything free we can do to help our homes sell easier? Free is my favorite word. <laughs> is there anything free we can we can do to help our homes sell easier or or for more? Yes, yes, absolutely. I can share a few insider tricks that's sort of based on what we're seeing in Zillow data. We know the most common project sellers take on before they list their home for sale is interior painting. So let's say you're going to paint your home anyways. It really does pay to be strategic about the colors that you choose. Zillow's latest interior paint color analysis finds that homes that have light blue bathrooms can sell for nearly $4,700 more than expected. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And homes that have dark blue kind of moody bedrooms can sell for nearly $1,500 more. Oh my gosh. Well, we love blue a lot here at Simplified. So that works great for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Blue is like the new neutral and buyers love it too. So if you want to add a little bit of color to your home, think about those private spaces of the bedroom and the bathroom, and it could actually pay off when it's time to sell. The second trick is just thinking about highlighting the right features in your listing description. You know, we know that certain features kind of signal to a buyer that a home is desirable and up to date. So let's say your home has like modern farmhouse features, like you've got shiplap or you have a farmhouse sink. Make sure you mention that in your listing description and your home could sell for as much as 2.4% more than similar homes. Something you probably wouldn't even think to put in there is your doorbell camera. But if you've got one, mention it because your home could sell for five days faster than other homes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. That's so interesting. That's yeah. crazy that we have data to support that. That's so crazy. And then the third trick really quick is to make sure you've got a virtual tour and an interactive floor plan. Yeah. So on Zillow, it's absolutely free. You can use your cell phone. You can capture a virtual 3D home tour. And we know that listings that have one get 69% more views and 80% more saves than homes without one. So definitely worth your time. Yeah. As a shopper, I can absolutely attest to that. It is so helpful when homes have that on their listing. It's just so great to be able to feel like you can understand the layout. Because when you flip through pictures, it can be really hard to kind of get a grasp of what the feel of the home is. So those as a shopper have been really, really helpful. So I think that's a great point. The Simplified Podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. It's so easy to get caught up in what everyone else needs from you and never take a moment to think about what you need from yourself. But when we spend all of our time giving, it can leave us feeling stretched thin and burned out. Therapy can give you the tools to find more balance in your life so you can keep supporting others without leaving yourself behind. Guys, you know how invaluable therapy has been for me. As a wife and mom and daughter and friend, I wear so many hats. And if I'm not careful, I won't make myself a priority. But therapy has given me the tools and the confidence to say, how can I show up for myself so that I can show up for others too? That has been revolutionary for me. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. So find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash simplified today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash simplified. Guys, I want to spend more time outdoors with my family and as little time in the kitchen as humanly possible. But I still want us to have healthy and delicious meals. We're not ordering out all the time. And that is where Green Chef comes in. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And this summer, you can bring more flavor to your table with Green Chef's delicious recipes featuring organic fruits and veggies and ingredients like tart cherries, truffle zest, and rainbow carrots. They have easy step-by-step -step recipes that even I, a non-cook, can make in less than 30 minutes. And I love these recipes because they've done so much of the prep for me, like measuring sauces, spices, and dressings. Guys, Green Chef has been killing it lately. The other night, we had some blackened shrimp and grits that I wanted to lick right out 
out of the pan. Is that bad? We also really loved the cheesy baked ricotta chicken and pesto green beans. Oh, so good. So save time in the kitchen this summer with Green Chef. Go to greenchef.com slash simplified60 and use simplified60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. One more time, go to greenchef.com slash simplified60 and use code simplified60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. So we all hear that kitchens and bathrooms make the home. They're where people spend the most amount of time. So what features do people want in 2023? If we are sprucing up our kitchen with selling in mind, should we go trendy or should we stay timeless? We know today's home buyers do appear willing to pay more for a home that has a professional chef's kitchen or features that would be in a professional mm -hmm. chef's kitchen. And buyers love steam ovens. Steam ovens, I don't know if you've heard about them. They're relatively new appliances. I just heard about it for the first time. We looked at a house a couple of weeks ago and it was the first time. So tell us more. What is this steam oven that we need to know about? Yeah. What What is this newfangled feature that everybody is talking about? <laughs> it's you know, It cooks food with steam, as the name implies, instead of hot air or oil. So it's sort of a healthier way to cook food. The food retains its nutrients. It's much faster to cook this way. So steam ovens are, are incredibly popular right now. We know buyers are also willing to pay more for a kitchen that's got professional appliances induction cooktops or ranges mm -hmm, are really yeah. popular, and a pot filler as well. This year, the top-performing countertop surface is soapstone. It can contribute to a 2.5% sale premium. Quartz is also hugely popular countertop surface. So bottom line, if you have these features in your home, want them in your listing description when you're selling I wouldn't say go out and install these features as a one-off. Really, these features should be viewed as signals to a buyer that this is a nice home. And it probably has a lot of other bells and whistles, too, that are desirable. And I'll caveat all of this by saying that if you're renovating your kitchen before listing your home, you should know that your know, kitchen renovations on the whole offer some of the worst returns on investment. Oh, wow. That's the opposite of what I would think. That's so crazy. Yeah, you're only going to get about 50 cents back on the dollar. And Zillow Research finds that one out of five recent sellers think that completing a kitchen renovation actually helps sell their home. Wow. Okay, that's so good to know as I'm staring at my own kitchen. That is so good to know. Now, if only a chef's kitchen actually came with a chef or made my skills in the kitchen any better, that would be really great. That would, that would be nice, right? <laughs> Speaking of kitchen, kitchen cabinets, they cost an actual fortune. So what is an easy thing to do to upgrade the look and feel that maybe might not include ripping them out and replacing them? Yeah, look, if your cabinets are in good condition and you like the flow of your kitchen, you've got a few options. So the first one, the easiest thing is to update your knobs or your poles. We know brass and matte black are the preferred finishes to appeal to today's buyer. Mm -hmm. Second upgrade is to paint your cabinets. Buyers are willing to pay more for a kitchen that's got either charcoal or mid-tone gray cabinets. So those would be safe color choices if you've got resale in mind. And then the last upgrade that you might want to consider would be to swap out the cabinet doors. A little bit more work, but if you put in a shaker style cabinet door, they're classic and it can help your home sell for 1.7% more than similar homes. The shakers are gorgeous. They're my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fun. Okay. Let's talk about floors. More than ever, I'm hearing about luxury vinyl and it scares me a little bit. So tell me, tell me more. Is it worth it? Is this the linoleum of our parents' 90s kitchens that we should avoid at all costs? What, what is the story here? Oh, that's so funny. I'm like getting flashbacks of um, my yeah, right? peach colored kitchen <laughs> that my mother installed in the visceral, 90s. Visceral memories. Oh, yes. it, yeah, that didn't, it didn't age well. And I think it's just no. too early to tell if luxury vinyl is really going to stand the test of time. But we know today's buyers really like it. They like its durability. They like its look. They're willing to pay more for it. And I was surprised to find that luxury vinyl actually outperformed hardwoods in our analysis. So in the right space, this can be a, a pretty affordable option that's almost indestructible. 
Yeah, they're durable, especially if you've got young kids and pets, and that's it. They're such a, it's a such a durable option. That's really an easy switch. Speaking of kids and pets, so many people who are looking for houses have kids or pets that they want to make sure that are accommodated in a move. Hi, it's me. What kinds of features are valuable to them to families like that? Yeah, no, you're absolutely right, and and, and because so many people are shopping. With kids and pets in mind, that's actually driving up demand and driving up prices for family-friendly homes and, and homes that have those pet-friendly features. You know, our research finds that home values and zip codes that have a higher share of children younger than 18 are growing faster than home values elsewhere in that mm -hmm. same county. So that's in large part due to this demand coming from the millennial generation you know, yep. They're looking for homes and family-friendly neighborhoods. They're looking for those kid-friendly amenities. They want proximity to a playground. They want to be close to schools. They want to be near other young families, too. You know, the other big rising trend that we've seen is pet ownership. 73% of home buyers now report having at least one pet, and that's impacting their home preferences. Mm -hmm. We know pet owners are more likely to buy larger homes, homes that are bigger than 3,000 square feet. And they're more likely to consider outdoor space extremely or very important. In particular, dog owners love their pups so much that 60% <laughs> of them say that they would consider moving if their home was no longer working for their dog. So yep, how about add that? me to that list. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you listed pretty much every single item on my family's home wish list. So put me square in that millennial bucket. That is the phase of life we are in. So that makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, no. And and unfortunately, so many people are in your boat. And so that's why you're probably seeing those eight offers on a home right now, because you're probably looking around and seeing a lot of other couples who look very much like you in your similar situation as you're going to open houses. Yep, absolutely. Do you ever wish you had a personal assistant who could just take care of those small tasks that somehow pile up into a big avalanche of tasks? Same, girl, same. But with Rocket Money's cancellation concierge, I sort of feel like I have a personal assistant to help save me money right in my back pocket. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. I cannot get over how easy it is to save on my subscriptions with Rocket Money. Emily told me the other day that they saved her $700 on her Verizon bill this year. And it's not just her. The cancellation concierge saved producer Amy almost $200 on her internet bill and got her better internet service without her even asking for it. Isn't that amazing? I wonder what they could do for you. So stop throwing your money away. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash simplified. That's rocketmoney.com slash simplified. Rocketmoney.com slash simplified. You guys, Father's Day is almost here. I always try to give my dad a meaningful gift that will make him feel really special and loved. And one of the best gifts I've ever given him has been StoryWorth. StoryWorth is an online service that helps you and your loved ones connect through sharing stories and memories and preserves them for years to come. Every week, StoryWorth emails your loved one a thought-provoking question like, what is the bravest thing you've ever done? Or if you could see into the future, what would you want to know? After one year, StoryWorth compiles all those questions and stories, including photos, into a beautiful keepsake book the whole family can share for generations. My dad is one of the greatest people I have ever known, and StoryWorth helped me pull stories and advice from him I never would have gotten otherwise. I loved hearing his stories from when he was a kid and what he's learned about life along the way. Give all the dads in your life a unique, meaningful gift you'll all cherish for years. StoryWorth. Right now, for a limited time, you'll save $10 on your first purchase when you go to storyworth.com slash simplified. That's S-T-O-R-Y-W-O-R-T-H dot com slash simplified to save $10 on your first purchase. Storyworth.com slash simplified. Okay, Amanda, last question for you. Exterior of our homes, how much do we really have to do to the exterior? How much does curb appeal really matter? Landscaping, what that first impression looks like when you walk up to a house. How much does that matter and how much work should we be putting into that? I love this question because here's the secret. 
traditional curb appeal doesn't sell homes anymore. Online curb appeal is what sells homes today. And it's because we have just changed the way that we shop for homes, right? A vast majority of buyers are starting their home search online. They're not loading the kids into the minivan and, and going from <laughs> open house to open house to open house every single weekend, hoping to find the one. You know, that in-person wow factor just is not as important anymore. Mm -hmm. I like to make the analogy. It's kind of like online dating. If someone's profile picture is not doing it for you, you swipe left. Yep. And if you're browsing homes online, you're doing the same thing, right? You need to be drawn in by that cover image where you're moving on. Well, that cover image can really be a shot of your stunning kitchen. It can be your beautiful view, your backyard. It doesn't have to be your home's exterior anymore. And you know, that said, if a buyer shows up IRL and the home's exterior has <laughs> got overgrown landscaping and there's peeling paint and all that, you know, that would be a real letdown. Yep. Just like if you go to meet an online dating <laughs> match and... They're also not looking up to their profile pictures. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, spruce up the exterior a little bit, but that exterior curb appeal is no longer a deal breaker. It, instead, you, you just really want to focus on having an amazing media package that highlights your home's best features and boosts that online curb appeal. So professional photography, drone photography, and you've got to have that virtual 3D home tour interactive mm -hmm. floor plan for, for today's buyers. Mm -hmm. Our first impression is no longer when you walk up to the house, it is online. So that is, that's where you got to make the impact. Exactly. Amanda, thank you so much for chatting with me today. I cannot tell you how helpful this has been. I know that it will be to all of our friends listening too. So we appreciate you taking the time with us today. Well, thank you so much for having me and good luck on your home search, Liz. Oh, thank you. I will keep everyone posted. It's already been a long journey and I'm sure we've got a ways to go. <laughs> Stick with it. It is worth it. You're going to end up in the home you're meant to be in. Okay, wow. That was so helpful. I just love learning from people who know their stuff, and Amanda definitely does. I'm absolutely going to be adding changing out some hardware to our weekend projects list, and changing out our light fixtures is a really easy one to tackle, too. I can't wait to see how these easy DIY improvements make a difference in the value of our house. All right, friends. Let me say a blessing over you as you get ready to get back to your day. May your home be a place that has your heart. May it be a place you love to wake up on a sunny Saturday morning and a soft place to land on the hard days. May your home be a physical place, but also one that lives in your heart, a place you can take with you wherever you go. This is the part of the episode where we usually give you a little tip you can tuck in your pocket and take with you. So here's what I've got for you today. You don't have to be thinking about moving to make your home nice. It's a good excuse, but you can spruce up your home anytime you want. Make it a place for you and your family to love and enjoy and live in. Is there something Amanda talked about today that would be easy for you to do this summer? Make a plan and do it. Mark off a weekend in your planner and paint your trim or change out your light fixtures or spruce up the backyard. If that project feels like too much, then take baby steps. You could spend one weekend getting supplies and then doing your project next weekend. Sometimes dividing up the goal into two parts or even more helps to trick your brain into thinking it's easy. That's what I do anyway. Hey, thanks for listening to the Simplified Podcast. You can find show notes for this episode over at emilylay.com for more info on links and resources I mentioned here. And you can shop the entire collection of simplified planners and products. You can also follow me on Instagram at Liz M. Holtzman, where you can follow my journey in house shopping, my life as a new mom, and more. You can also follow our brand at Simplified for tons of simplicity tips and inspiration to get you through the day. Thanks for being here, you guys. If you want conversations like this every week, click the follow button on our show wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you liked what you heard today, leave us a review. That helps other people find the show too, and it means a lot. That's all I've got for you. Be sure to tune in next week for more simplified goodness. Until next time, I hope you have a great day. <laughs>